Hello and welcome as it is that of the 20th day of uh, January 2018 at 19, 19 and this is the crypto day morning thought I'd be going back in time not really within the Bitcoin chart and all bets trades of the like within each his own risk reward was up at this upper Fibonacci line at 3700 where it was resisting now falling back down, but not quite to 3470 with today's low coming in at 3481. I guess close enough, but uh, we'll remove the lines, take a look at this a little more further. And within this uh, move of this bear market from the uh, break below 6000, this rally attempt established this level of resistance was unable to get above it. Since the decent uh, red candle down day in here, market has merely been going sideways. A little attempt in yesterday's session to get above, making it to the 18 highs. Obviously, that has failed. It came back, but it still hasn't broken down below this level of support. But with the last ditch effort that it would have, if, of course, it's going to break down, not a surprise You see a move come up to this declining 18 highs first time it's tested that area since it left it on the 10th of january that the best way of placed of pointing this out is this key level of support which uh was tested originally in here was then extended a little further but tested amongst here and then the same thing test number three amongst this area it is holding and staying above this line, but failing to do so. Well, that's probably going to not only make a move to previous low at around 31, but a decent leg lower, and that would be several hundred points lower, and that's conservative. If, of course, that event is going to happen when these moves happen, they happen very, very quickly and rapidly. Single hour time frame, two large red candles down, and a couple very tiny green candles there after the fact. 15 minute time frame this happened uh, three out of four 15 minute periods is what it happened one big big pause big and then it's just been grinding its way in an uptrend with very low volatility sense and that's what these markets basically do significant up move or down move and then go sideways and sideways can occur in one of three ways in an up bias in a down bias or in a sideways bias in a sideways bias, you have clear support resistance that you're going to be able to notice. And in the up bias, you're generally going to do it in an up range. And you're seeing how it would be done as in such. With an aid, I managed to get my buy back in. This is an altcoin that I've been talking about a little bit. On the single hour time frame, I ended up buying it back at the uh, 650 handle. And thus, I have, I'm up a little over 40% and since that trade at the price point of the 651. And the price point that I got in was just a little below it because this is pretty much back to zero in the 0% return. This low is pretty close to where this up high is. So therefore, the system or the, uh, the trading method is doing what I would like for it to do. And when you look at the market conditions, 650 was a no-brainer idea in this area. Now, generally speaking, you can say, well, and 600 and low, I, I, that's a good spot. And you know what? I think it is, too. It's uh, the conservative buy, because the last thing I want to do is buy at a spot I think it's got a very good chance at bottoming at if it's going to go there, like around 605, and then find out the low is 607. And it can even go deep in here to the 500s, but this gives me the opportunity. I'm buying at 650. Where do I buy? I can buy, well, at the lowest in the 550s. I can even buy at this previous low around here. Could even go lower than that if you feel there's going to be a leg lower. Because, if, for example, if I'm looking to buy low, sell high, and I end up buying here, and it just keeps going down lower where I'd buy again. Well, I would be better off not buying here and then buying again later. But either way, if I happen to buy here and then buy again lower, then I realize it's all going to work out as long as, of course, I stay with my buy orders, stay with my sell orders, 
so on and so forth within this market. Now move on, let's move on to Swarm City Token, trading this pretty much the exact same way as that of Aidcoin. And within this on a daily time frame, it's just hanging in there doing a whole bunch of nothing, but it's not doing what it was doing here, and that's having great volatile moves. That was going on December 1st through December the 18th. On the single hour time frame, what we can see is that it did have this little run up here, enough where I was able to end up getting a sale at the upper end of that price point. Now where to buy, you cannot see on this chart. There's no way, no how. You can see it by actually going to where you trade, in this case, the Bittrex exchange. And when I show the order books, and this is the uh, buys and then the sells, this is page two on the list. And I got a uh, fraction of the uh, 2600 available for buy at the price point of 3506 somebody at 3500 wants to buy or the group of it over 6 bitcoin and then at 3502 it's an additional 1.13 at 3503 it's 0 .79 uh, 84 and I'm fine going 3504 but there, to me there's no difference really 3504 3506 3501 so I'm just going to park here if you will and well, that's the strategy in which I'm looking for finding the buys and sell orders. And what I like to do is I'll check these, I'll check this later again in the day and into tomorrow and see that if they adjust their message of the market and change it, then I'm going to have to uh, counter their move. And I want to talk, I want to finish off now by talking about college television and the National Football League. Today, the Kansas City Chiefs take on that of the New England Patriots, really the current dynasty. And I'm cheering for Kansas City tonight in different ways, mainly in fantasy. But but you know what? You cheer for more than just that. I remember watching Saved by the Bell as a kid. It just resonated with me given that the cast was pretty much around my age or pr exactly in that, depending on, of course, the, the uh, character. But the Zach Powers, he was born pretty much the same time as me. So kids around my age it was on all the time on the television stations on like seven eight different ones on the cable so it was easy to get and then they went into the episode called the college years and then there was former national football league player mike golick on the show with the character dustin diamond who was or dustin diamond's character screech powers and screech powers said man i enjoy cheering for the referees in the National Football League and it was funny but tonight I'm cheering for the referees in the Kansas City game against New England I'm cheering for them to throw yellow flag after yellow flag because my play tonight my wager that I'm going to be making that's not fantasy football related the only non fantasy football wager how about that is going to be that of over 13 and a half penalties accepted by both teams combined the price for both sides is minus 110 as standard price. When looking back at all the Kansas City home games, with the exception of a couple, it's mainly games like the, uh, like the last game against Oakland. But it's 15, 18, 19, 20, 21 penalties every single game. Last week, it was, it was just fun. So go refs, go. Throw those flags. Throw those flags. That is how I'm playing that. Thank you for tuning in. A hockey, basketball, there'll be a night off for that. And I'll be back. Uh, maybe with charts later today, but uh, definitely again tomorrow, if not. Thank you, and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.